I don't know if I've ever told this story, but back in college when I had only been playing guitar for about seven or eight months, I was looking for new riffs to learn. I happened to find this riff that I had learned from Marty or wherever I was looking at tabs at the time. I was practicing it. It sounded something like this. At the time, I thought that was pretty good. And before you guys fully convict me of crimes against guitar humanity, one of my friends who lived across the hall, who was an actual guitar player, came in and he goes, Mike, are you finally starting to learn some Chili Peppers licks? And I go, yeah, man, I am. So he goes, give me the strap real quick. So I take it off and I give it to him. And he starts playing this. Now, at this point, I am instantly floored. Like my jaw is on the floor. I don't know what is happening. I don't know what to do. I've never heard anything like that. That that strumming technique, I thought that strumming was only for like acoustic guitar players with like huge cowboy chords, you know? I ask him, I'm like, man, why is that lick so good? He goes, well, that's because it's a Frusciante lick. I was like, I thought you said it was a Peppers lick. And he goes, no, Mike, Frusciante is the guitar player for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I'm like, oh, okay. So with the little knowledge that I have of the Chili Peppers, because I didn't really grow up listening to rock music, I look to the internet. I find this article on Google called Rolling Stones Top 100 Guitar Players of All Time. And just to show how ridiculous this upcoming story is, at this point, I only knew about four or five guitar players outside of Jimi Hendrix and John Mayer, if that. And on that guitar list, it has John Frusciante listed as a top 20 guitar player of all time. And at the time, I was appalled. Borderline angry. I mean, the, the can't stop riff was good, but you're calling this man one of the most influential guitarists of all time? That is ridiculous. And I cannot and will not accept that. I was borderline angry and I told a lot of guitar players about it and I probably sounded really stupid, but yeah, I thought it was ridiculous that they would put him that high. Moving forward into my guitar career over the next couple years, I decided to do my due diligence and really find out why they think this Frusciante guy is so great. And it was pretty instantly, as soon as I did my deep dive into the Peppers, I was like, I was completely wrong. They were completely right. This guy is one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Along with Mayer, he might be the most influential guitarist of the last like 30 years. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's the perfect line between energy and restraint. Where we have that can't stop stop riff with so much energy and we have these Danny California riffs where, where you can just feel it. Well, you also have the Californication solo. This man is just pure melodic restraint. He can shred as much as he wants to, like on that Danny California riff that I won't even pretend that I can play at full speed, but he can also be the most melodic guitar player of all time. And he always knows exactly what to play. So at that point, I was basically a Frusciante fanboy. Also with the energy that I played with in my band and just being ridiculous on stage, he's kind of the guitar player, even to a point more than Mayer that I emulated. So fast forward a couple years later, my band decided Besides, we're gonna cover a Chili Pepper song in a future upcoming gig. And I remember when we were deciding which song we were gonna play, I had recently heard a Pepper song called Dark Necessities. And at this point, even though I knew a lot about John Frusciante, I didn't know about the history of the Chili Peppers or like how many guitars they'd have or any of the current stuff going on with the band. And I wanted to do Dark Necessities because it was their new like radio single and I had heard it a couple times, but I hadn't really broken down the song as a musician yet. And upon really looking into the song, I remember hearing the intro. So I start fully geeking out over this song and I go to my friend and I go, man, Frusciante killed it on this track. And he goes, Mike, that's not Frusciante. Frusciante left the band a little bit ago. That's this dude named Josh Klinghoffer. And immediately I was like, what? Who the heck is Josh Klinghoffer? And how the heck is he gonna replace one of the greatest guitar players I've ever heard? My friend was probably laughing at me at this point. So I walked around basically enraged thinking that anyone could replace the guitar hero that is John Frusciante or even try to replace him, not knowing why he walked away or again, the history of the band. And then in practicing Dark Necessities, again, I hear this solo. <laughs> and I break it down for the first time. And it was at that point that I realized I hate Josh Klinghoffer. When I say hate, I don't think I mean what you think I mean. Let me break it down into an acronym. In this case, I mean having appreciation that's 
earned. That solo is beautiful. That solo is everything I love about guitar. And then I went into the first album he was on. And then I fully dived into the getaway and I realized Josh Klinghoffer is one of the best guitar players I've ever heard. And that I don't need to hate one to love the other. I can love both Klinghoffer and Fujianti and what they've done for one of my favorite bands of all time. But what really flipped the script, and I'll, I'll show you real quick. You see Dark Necessities, like I said, it started off with this riff that was just this instant build of tension. <laughs> really cool about the solo is the music theory behind it. So the solo starts on this E flat and he kind of does two consecutive notes over and over again while he runs down the scale before doing a couple hammer-ons. Now it starts on this E flat, right? Plays that twice, then he plays the D twice, then he plays the C twice. That would be cool enough if it was your standard pentatonic lick, but we have to look at what he's actually playing over. Because in the chorus, the first chord that he plays is this A flat major. Now, if we know our triads, Music is Wind taught me this. He's one of the best guitar YouTubers out there. Triads are kind of king, and to give you the real quick spark notes for those of you who don't know, every quarter is composed of three notes, the one, the three, and the five. And one of the best ways to improve your solo is to find out what chord you're soloing over and target those notes in the chord. So for Dark Necessities, we start out with this A flat major, and the very first note he plays is this E flat. In our A flat, we have the one, three, five, like I said. And E flat just happens to be the fifth of that very first chord. So he's targeting that note with that. And so we keep running down that scale. and we get to our hammer-on section. One of the things that this really great guitar YouTuber who's killing it on shorts, Gavin Guitar Tips, talked about is we all do our standard pentatonic runs. When we're going down, we do pull-offs. And we're when we're going up, we tend to do hammer-ons. Cool thing that Josh Klinghoffer does here is he actually does hammer-ons on the way down. And I think that's what makes it so interesting. And even though he's doing the same interval every time, it's just a full step hammer on, it sounds interesting because you're used to hearing that pull off. So that's something you can practice. Instead of just doing the pull offs, you can try practicing hammer ons. Turn those into trills and you get the Hendrix sound. But then we go to our second chord, which is this F minor. And remember what we were talking about before, targeting those notes in the chord. So as soon as we get to the F minor, he starts off with a hammer on from the B flat to the C. And what we can see in our triad for F minor is that C is actually the fifth of this chord. Just like we saw in that A flat major, where E flat was also the five. He's targeting the five of the first two chords, making it sound extra melodic, even though he's only doing those interval hammer ons. Going to our third chord of the progression, Klinghoffer actually accents a different chord tone. So our third chord is the C minor. And he's starting on that E flat, just like before, which happens to be the third of our C minor. And for our final chord, which is our B flat, he's hammering on from the one of that chord. So he's hammering on from that B flat to C, like we talked about before, when we get to the hammer on section. And don't be afraid to put a little spank on that hammer on. It helps if you have a nice compressor. I'll link the compressor that I usually use in the description. Now I could get into every single Josh Klinghoffer song out there that I love from the first album or from the getaway, especially if we got into Sick Love, which would take about a 24 hour analysis before I would finish geeking out about it in full. But to restate my thesis for all of this, Klinghoffer has earned every bit of appreciation that he's gotten as a guitar player, not just as a fill-in for Fruscianti, but as his own kind of entity with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I love him as a guitar player. I love his guitar playing. He kind of represents to me a time in my guitar playing ability where I first discovered this band that I really love and took a deep dive. So check out some Klinghoffer. Check out some Frujanti if you have the time. Anyway, thank you so much guys for watching this one. I know the videos have been a little bit longer um, recently and that's in me kind of trying to really figure out what I want this channel to be. I love comedy. I really do. I want to keep incorporating it into skits, into videos, into everything on this channel, but I want to see where it can go 
with some of these longer form videos and everything we're doing. Again, if you love the gear, if you love the tones, I got this from the homies out at Sweetwater. The link will be in the description. If you want more breakdowns, please let me know. I love doing the first two, I love doing this one. Comment down below what guitar players you'd like me to cover and what other videos you'd want me to see on who we hate. Leave this video a like if you can. Make sure to smash the subscribe button. And most important of all, have a fantastic day.